Welcome everyone to Inside Academia, the weekly program where we take a look behind the ivory curtain, seeking a frank discussion about American education. I'm your host, Andy Nash. My guest today is Dr. Ben Novak. Ben Novak is a graduate of Penn State of 1965, a Vietnam vet, graduate of Georgetown Law of 1968, founder and senior partner of his own law firm, practicing law for 30 years in Center County, PA. He's also a former adjunct professor and assistant dean of students at Penn State, and formerly a 12-year trustee, and he received his Ph.D. in philosophy and history in 1999. He was a brother of Tau Kappa Epsilon fraternity, commonly known as, commonly known as Teak, residential fraternity at Penn State, also an honorary member of ODK, Lions Paul Senior Honor Society, as well as Phi Eta Sigma, and many others. Dr. Novak, welcome to Inside Academia. Thanks, Andy. Glad to be here. Thank you. Our topic today is we're going to be discussing the role and origin of fraternities in Greek life in universities and colleges. Ben, much is made about the uh, role of fraternities in uh, higher education, especially in, in more recent times and with all the behavioral issues that go on. Uh, what is the uh, origin of fraternities throughout higher education? Well, fraternities uh, were formed and have existed since the Middle Ages in Europe. Uh, however, the major boost to fraternities came uh, in the early uh, 19th century, largely as a result of the uh, uh, Napoleonic Wars. Uh, at that time, German young people, German university students, organized into fraternities, and they became part, a very, played a very important role in uh, defeating the French, de defeating Napoleon, uh, both uh, uh, when he returned from Russia and at, wa and at Waterloo. Uh, the, uh, they developed a strong sense of community, of, of, of bonding, of uh, 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 a whole way of organizing uh, young people at a campus in, in a way that they really liked. And so uh, the, for, when the uh, uh, universities were developing in the United States, why we borrowed much from German education. In fact, uh, there were two models of education, the British tutorial system and the German lecture system, and the universities that were formed uh, in the second half of the 20th century were based on the German uh, idea of a higher education, largely, and with that came many of the German institutions like fraternities. Okay, and what purpose uh, or role did that serve for uh, young American college students in the late 19th and early 20th centuries? Well, it formed some very important roles. Uh, Alexis de Tocqueville said in the 1830s and 40s on his visits to America that he noticed Americans were joiners. And the uh, fraternities were offering one of the best means when you came to a college student, a co college campus as a, as a new student, why uh, you, you, you were alone. And you wanted to get with others and develop with them. And so uh, fraternities were a natural institution for young people to bond with each other, uh, and live together to have their own house that they were in control of and responsible for, had to clean up, and, and was their presentation to the world and to the campus. Uh, and so uh, that was the first reason. The second reason was polishing. Remember, most Americans at that time were, were on the farm. And when they came to college, uh, uh, what they wanted to do was, was to be formed. And so uh, the uh, uh, second verse of our uh, 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 alma mater talks about forming us. Uh, we are formed at the university at our alma mater, our dear mother. Well, that formation, uh, the best institution for that was the fraternity because young people went into the fraternity and it polished them. It, it was intended to uh, teach them how to dress, how to the proper manners at a meal, how to act, how to uh, be sociable with other people in a polite and courteous way. And so uh, young people who were eager to, to come to college and then, then from there go out in the world, why uh, they really appreciated the polishing and the formation that, uh, that uh, fraternities provided. The third thing was is they were important elements on the campus. They were the best organized. They had the strongest bonds. They worked together. And so young people joined the fraternities in order to be able to learn how to work with other people closely. So they lived with them, they organized with them, they put on parties, they conducted activities, they invited guests to the fraternity that they, to, to speak and to, 
to get to know them. And so uh, the fraternity house became a center of activity that they themselves organized. And so this was an important uh, 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 part of development and an important attraction to fraternities. So there was a socializing as well as character developing formation going on. That was the, right. the effectual role of a uh, fraternity. Um, and it's interesting to note, by the way, that this was these were purely student-initiated uh, institutions. Uh, yes. that they were not created by the uh, the bureaucracies of administrators at universities and colleges handed down from the top. These were yeah. from the ground up. Yeah, and I want to mention that many times the administrators opposed them. For example, here at Penn State, uh, which was uh, founded in 1850, or start open for classes in 1859. Uh, by, by 1861, fraternities were already forming here at Penn State. And uh, in just a few years, the faculty outlawed them. And wow. fraternities, well, they thought they were uh, too strong an organization, uh, that they uh, were, that they thought that, you know, everybody should be equal, everybody should be the same, they shouldn't get together and bond. And so they outlawed them. But, of course, uh, what happened was, that the fraternities didn't, didn't, they disappeared on the surface, but they continued to, to exist uh, uh, sub rosa. They, they continued to exist underground. And then when in 1887 we got a new president who really wanted to push this campus forward, he immediately went to the faculty and said, please legalize fraternities. So many of these fraternities instantly surfaced and began to build houses. And, of course, many other fraternities formed as the university uh, student body grew. Well, Ben, let me, let me fast forward a little bit to more contemporary times. Uh, it seems as though the, the conventional wisdom of the last uh, few or several decades, uh, the, the post-Animal House generation, if you will, has been, as far as fraternities are concerned, it's, is, is the idea that it's a place where you go to where privileged uh, sons go for uh, their, their pursuit of their, their, their pleasures, their desires. They want to go, you know, have all the, the partying and the drinking and the sex and you name it, and uh, they make all the social connections in which to do all those things. And that's why you join a fraternity, and, and also for whatever ancillary benefit of uh, networking beyond your college years. Uh, I think most young people in, in their minds regard those are the reasons being why you join a fraternity, at least unofficially, if not officially, of course. And um, many people don't seem to contest that. Um, how do you contrast that with... Um, the type of the, the origin of the fraternity that you're describing, and how and when did it change, and was it really any different in the past? Well, it was extremely different in the past. We could talk about the period from, let's say, about 1880 or 1890 till 1960, approximately, as the golden age of fraternities, uh, where they performed the kind of functions that I said to you earlier. Uh, then came the sexual revolution, the cultural revolution, the political revolutions here in America, the flower power, and all the rest of it. Uh, uh, Animal House came out in 1978, I believe. And I, I think that it, it could be said that there was no film that so effectively destroyed an entire institution than Animal House destroyed fraternities. But it is instructive. You have to look for it in the film. But Animal House was different than all the other fraternities on the campus, even in the movie. Mm -hmm. And so they were, they, they were uh, uh, pro uh, pro projected as, you know, stuffy, and they wore suits and ties, and they looked respectable, and were very proud of their houses. And the animals in Animal House were uh, uh, trying to be as offensive as they could be, good old John Belushi. Everybody loved them. Uh, and after that, young people came to the campus with that idea of fraternity, mm -hmm. rather than... Uh, the earlier idea. I see. Well, they, they paraded that, they championed that, uh, because they viewed the older idea as being this uh, stodgy old, this, I guess, for lack of a better way of putting it, stuck-up caste system, if you will, of social snobbery that had outlived its day. And that was the oh. narrative portrayed in Animal House. And so the, the, the brazen irreverence against all of that was the fresh new look that everybody embraced. Yeah, well, uh, I, I, l let me put it in slightly different terms. What the young people wanted from in its golden age, let's say from 1890 till 1960, uh, 
people wanted to learn respectability. They wanted to learn uh, social graces. They wanted to learn uh, uh, how to dress, how to act, uh, proper manners. They wanted to learn that, and they wanted to prepare for commencement day. Commencement means the beginning. You leave college, and then you begin your life. And so they wanted to be prepared for that. Uh, and so, uh, but but your idea that this was a an elitist or, uh, uh, group or anything, I think, at least in my experience, w had almost no truth to it, uh, because uh, for the fraternity movement spread over the campus. At one time, 80 percent of the student body at Penn State lived in fraternity houses, so the of the entire student body. So it's hard to say that uh, you have an elite that consists of 80 percent, you know, uh, and. Uh, there were there were when I was here in the early 60s, I think there were 56 fraternities on the Penn State campus. They were not elitist. People went to them in order to be polished so they could talk to the elite when they graduated, to to, to learn the manners and and so forth to be able to do that and mm -hmm. have the confidence, the social confidence and the social graces to get along well in the world. Uh, they uh, because they did this in the fraternity houses. They were normally the leaders of the campus, even when they were fraternity uh, students on campus were in a minority. Still, the uh, the fraternity uh, fraternity students, because they were being polished, because they were being formed, because they were helped to become self confident and have you know uh, social confidence, uh, they were generally the leaders on most campuses. But it was not an elitism of a particular ethnic group or or uh, money and so forth. Uh, it, it was because it was the, it was the poor people that wanted to get in fraternities to be polished. <laughs> Given all the changes, do you, would you say firstly that uh, the fraternities only became a reflection of the very society that populated them and, and the universities altogether, or was there any kind of a greater like a structural breakdown within the fraternities that uh, led to all of the changes that you're describing? Yeah, there, there was a, let's, I'm going to say there was a, first it was a reflection of society. Uh, I mean, that's always the case with all institutions, churches, government, everything reflects society. And so the fraternities were deeply affected by the changes in society that began in the 1960s. However, it, it was also a structural change in this respect. It didn't change the structure of the fraternities so much, but it changed them within the structure of the university. Earlier, Prior to Animal House, the students, the, the fraternities were trying to train for leadership uh, and, and for uh, confident people able to handle social situations, so they were often the leaders of the campus. After Animal House, everybody wanted to be like John Belushi. And so fraternities no longer seemed to produce as much leadership as they once did. And so uh, 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 where before they sought that leadership and sought to train for it, and to develop the, the social abilities for young people coming from the farms and the factories to learn those things, to be able to become leaders. It was a, 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 an institution that helped people move to the top, helped the lower classes move to the top. We only got a minute left. Uh, what, what do you see today? Uh, is it going back to in, in the earlier idea of fraternity, in your opinion, or is it not? And if it's not, how can it, or can it at all, in your opinion? Well, I think so that, how. What, I, what I see today is fraternities are a reflection of society because society is looking more and more harshly at the drinking, at the sex, at the irresponsibility of using the house just to bring girls over and have parties. That is uh, uh, society, the reflection of society is that is more and more frowned upon. And so fraternities will have to find to do something else. In other words, that 1960s image. The, the John Belushi Animal House image is going out of style in society. Didn't they, so, didn't they have parties back in the 1920s and things like that? Didn't they have all that same kind of thing then? Didn't young people do the same sort of things? Well, uh, not the same sort of things, no. The, the purpose of parties was to show that you had some social grace, that you right. had uh, the polish. The, the parties were very impressive affairs. For example, they, they had house mothers. Many of the house mothers lived in the fraternities. You couldn't behave like you behave today in fraternities. Uh, it was, you know, you had to, it was a totally different social uh, dynamic and social acceptance. I see. So, uh, so uh, where, that where do you see back. it today? 
well, I'm waiting for the young men in fraternities or for the new people to come into fraternities, new freshmen who will come here and come to all the college camps and say, look, we have these houses already existing in many senses. In many cases, they are the most dignified and impressive buildings in the whole town because they were built 100 years ago. And uh, take them over, fix them up, and make them something to be proud of right. and start polishing the students again. You know, because society in general has lost that polish, those social graces, and so many students come in lacking the social confidence to uh, to make friends and move in, in social situations. Right. So I'm hopeful that they they will have the structures, the physical structures, the houses, to be able to form to perform that function again of socializing young people and making them able to become uh, social leaders and and. Uh, uh, set the, set the, the standards for the campus, which is what they did okay. from 1890 till 1960. All right. Well, that's about all the time we have. Uh, thanks again, uh, Dr. Ben Novak. Thanks for joining us today. This has been Inside Academia with Andy Nash. Check us out again on InsideAcademia.tv. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Please join us again next week as we take you for a look behind the Ivory Curtain.